And to start us off, I'm pleased to introduce Peter Robinson, Hello, Professor Chris. of Dental Public Health. Welcome. Yes. So what is Dental Public Health? Dental Public Health is the science and art of preventing oral disease and promoting oral health through the organised efforts of society. So how is this different to proper dentistry? <laughs> it is proper dentistry, uh, except that in Dental Public Health, the focus is on our whole population rather than one person sat in front of you. OK, so is this just not an easy matter of employing more dentists? Well, you'd think that. That's an intuitive answer, isn't it? But whilst dentists are absolutely great at caring for the individual patient, the patient who sits in front mm -hmm. of them, they're not so effective when it comes after, uh, to looking after a lot of people. OK, so can we not treat the population like lots of individual people anyway? Well, you'd think that that's a good intuitive answer, but dentists are less effective at uh, improving the health of the whole population. They're very good at looking after the patient who sits in front of them, but that doesn't generalise to the whole population very well. So, can you explain that for us? Yeah, well, let's... I can. Let's start with something uh, that's quite a long way from dentistry in the first instance to help you understand it. Let's think of a bee and a frog. Now, uh, everybody knows that when a bee stings you, it dies. Mm -hmm. uh, so we could imagine that a frog might try to eat a bee the bee stings the frog, and that's bad news for the bee because it's going to die. But the frog remembers not to try to eat any more bees because it got stung. And so what's bad for the individual is actually protective of the species of bees. Now, that's a very extreme example. Let's uh, take uh, an example closer to home. Whereabouts are you from? Southampton. Well, I was born in Hull. Now, I might have a genetic predisposition to disease, which is really bad for me, uh, bad news for me. Um, but we'd imagine that uh, the genetic determinants of health and disease uh, in Southampton and Hull are quite similar. The two cities quite similar on average. So whilst the genetic difference is very important for us individually, when we start to think of whole populations, it becomes less important. Now, your original question was about dentistry and employing mm -hmm. lots of dentists and so on and so forth. We know that uh, at the level of the population, um, the effect of dentistry is, is, is weakened somewhat. For a start off, there's never been a time when more than about 60% of the people have gone to the dentist. So dentists will never reach uh, nearly mm -hmm. half the population. Okay. Um, on top of that, even the best dentists, sometimes their treatment for a whole host of reasons is suboptimal, so the effect is weakened even more. At the level of the population, we know that uh, health is determined by bigger things, such as the conditions people live in, uh, levels of deprivation and education, and those kinds of things. So isn't this just stereotyping? There's a danger of that, and we need to be careful. When we talk about populations and averages, those averages are true, and anybody with a rudimentary knowledge of maths will know that, and they're real. What we mustn't do is start uh, applying averages and population-based statistics to individuals. We know, for instance, that most um, muggers are young men, but it would be downright offensive if every time we saw a young man we assumed that person was a mugger, so that we can't take a population-level generalisation and apply it to an individual person. So what do you do? Well, it's worth noting that some of the most effective things in terms of improving oral health have happened outside of the dental surgery. So adding fluoride to water supplies, or more commonly in the UK, uh, fluoride to toothpaste, have had really massive effects on oral health. Now the work for that, the science behind it, was all done by dentistry, but the care takes place outside of dental surgeries. Uh, in more focused ways though, we might find areas of the city that have worse oral health and then focus or target interventions of those particular parts of the city so that we might have uh, programs where dental nurses go in and apply fluoride varnish to kids teeth or we might have a breakfast club where we can feed the kids up make sure that they have a nice breakfast they'll be less inclined to snack on dodgy food and then uh, they can brush their teeth and those kinds of things at the breakfast club on top of that, we've discovered that the things that determine the oral health of the population 
are pretty much the same things that determine the general health. So as I mentioned earlier on, things like deprivation and education, socioeconomic status, those kinds of things. And so we try to tie in with public health and local authorities to work at that level to improve people's living conditions.